Sea moss is everywhere. Gels, gummies, lemonade, and the money chasing is wild. The global sea moss market was valued around 2.18 billion in 2024. That's a lot of moss. So today I'm going to give you the truth. What sea moss is, where the claims came from, the risk no one mentions, and how to stay safe if you still want to use it. Tradition deserves respect and receipts. Quick cultural context before we cut the hype rope. Sea moss has roots from Ireland to the Caribbean. In the US, a big wave of interest came through the late Dr. Sabi's influence and the wellness scene that amplified him. Whether you view him as visionary or controversial, his megaphone helped put CMOS on the map, especially in black communities I serve in my clinic. That context matters. Now let's see what holds up when we take it to the lab. So what is CMOS exactly? Here's the first surprise. The label sea moss isn't one species. The classic Irish moss is Chondrus crispus, a red algae rich in carrageenan, the gel fiber that makes puddings wobble. But many products sold as sea moss are actually other seaweeds like Gracilaria. Different species, different waters, different nutrient and iodine profiles. Translation, what's in the jar is not standardized. You're not buying a single predictable ingredient you're buying a category. That gel texture that makes your smoothies look like hair gel is largely thanks to carrageenan, a family of sulfated polysaccharides extracted from red seaweeds, including chondrus. In whole seaweed, you get the fiber in its food matrix, in processed gels. You can end up closer to a food additive experience than a whole food one. That doesn't make it evil. It makes it different. Let's speed run the promises. Claim one, it has 92 minerals. That's a social media myth with nine lives. Seaweeds do contain a variety of minerals, but the amounts vary widely by species, water, quality, and processing. There isn't a standardized human outcomes level data set proving that a tablespoon of gel delivers clinically meaningful mineral repletion. When wellness marketers say 92, they're reciting lore not peer-reviewed nutrition labels. Claim two, it's great for your thyroid. Seaweed does contain iodine, which your thyroid uses to make T3 and T4. But iodine is a Goldilocks nutrient. Too little is a problem and too much is also a problem. Most US adults hit their iodine needs from foods like iodine salt, dairy, eggs, and seafood. Piling sea moss on top can push you from adequate to overboard, especially if you're also using multivitamins or kelp-based blends. Claim three, gut health. Fiber in certain seaweed polysaccharides can support the microbiome in theory, but that's not the same as clinical outcomes like lower A1C, better blood pressure, or remission from IBS. Now the part TikTok skips, the risk. First, iodine overshoot. The recommended dietary allowance or RDA for adults is 150 micrograms a day. The tolerable upper limit UL is 1,100 milligrams per day from all sources. Blow past that repeatedly and you can trigger hyperthyroidism or thyroiditis, particularly if you've already got thyroid disease. People assume sea moss equals gentle, but seaweeds can carry huge iodine loads. Some kelp products, for example, clock into the thousands of micrograms per gram. You want a healthy thyroid, not a roller coaster. Second, heavy metals. Seaweeds are mineral sponges. They bioaccumulate arsenic, cadmium, lead, even mercury, depending on local water quality and species. That doesn't mean every bite poisons you. It means steady intake of poorly sourced product can dose you with metals you did not order. It's not fear just environmental chemistry. Third, processing and food safety. We've seen state advisories and recalls of sea moss gels and lemonades when small manufacturers lack proper processing controls, creating a low acid, low oxygen playground for pathogens. If you're whipping up mason jar gel at home, remember, refrigeration slows bacteria. It doesn't sterilize it. Fourth, the thickener debate. Carrageenan from red seaweed is widely used in foods, and regulators consider food-grade forms safe. 
but degraded carrageenan, polygenin, and some in vitro animal data raise inflammatory concerns, especially for people with IBD. Human evidence is mixed, but if your gut is sensitive, it's reasonable to avoid carrageenan heavy products and see if symptoms improve. Your body gets a vote. Fifth, here's the nerdy one, anticoagulant activity. Many sulfated seaweed polysaccharides, including some carrageenans, show heparin-like effects in lab assays. That doesn't mean your smoothie is a blood thinner. But if you're on anticoagulants, you don't need extra unknowns. Flag it with your clinician. Okay, doc, I'll just buy a better brand. That helps, but it doesn't erase the biology. Here's how to reduce risk if you're determined to try it. One, look for third-party testing and an actual certificate of analysis or COA that lists heavy metals and ideally iodine. NSF, UPS, or comparable independent programs beats trust us. Even then, seaweed iodine varies by season and site. So a COA is a snapshot, not a guarantee. Two, check what's blended in. Sea moss plus other ingredients like bladder whack sound sexy until you realize bladder whack is a brown seaweed notorious for very high iodine. That can take you from maybe okay to over the top within the scoop. Three, mind the label and what isn't on it. In the US, Dietary supplements are not approved by the FDA for safety or effectiveness before sale. Enforcement is mostly after the fact. That's why you see strong claims roaming free until a warning letter lands. It's the system we've got, so consumers must be savvy. Four, dose like a detective. Start low, use intermittently, not daily mega servings, and count all iodine sources. Alike, iodine salt about 45 micrograms per day, dairy, eggs, seafood, and any multivitamin. If you notice palpitations, heat cold intolerance, neck tenderness, or GI flares, stop and get checked. Five, avoid sketchy homebrew gels unless you truly understand safe processing. I love DIY, but not DIY botulism. Let's talk expectations. Will seaweed single-handedly fix energy, weight, and labs? If your inputs are ultra-processed carbs, seed oil overload, sleep debt, and chronic stress, the answer is no. You don't have a sea moss deficiency. You have a lifestyle signal screaming for help. My carnivore and low-carb folks know the drill. Prioritize protein, nutrient-dense animal foods, seafood for natural iodine and selenium, eggs for choline and iodine, and minerals from real food and broths. Then, if you still want sea moss occasionally and safely sourced, fine. But it should be a supporting actor, not the lead. If you came here for permission, for many healthy adults without thyroid disease, a small amount of well-sourced seaweed now and then is likely fine. But the daily sea moss gel everything trend, that's where I start seeing thyroid labs do the cha-cha. And if you're pregnant, breastfeeding, a child, you have known thyroid disease, you're on anticoagulants, or you have active IBD or IBS like me, my advice is to skip it unless your clinician gives a personalized green light. Respect your risk profile. Between iodine salt, eggs, and seafood, most people can meet iodine needs without mystery dosing. The win isn't a trendy jar. It's boring excellence. Sleep, protein, sunlight, strength training, and a grocery cart that looks like you care about next year's labs. Here's my clinical bottom line. CMOS sits at the intersection of tradition and trend. There's interesting biology, but human outcomes data are thin. Real risk exists. Iodine overshoot, contamination, processing lapses. And quality helps, but can eliminate the variability baked into a marine plant that absorbs whatever the ocean gives it. If you love it and it loves you back, make it occasionally. Demand transparency and keep your total iodine under control. If you're chasing better energy, weight, and metabolic markers, fix the inputs first. Supplements are the garnish, not the steak. And if this video saved your thyroid from a joyride, share it with someone who needs to hear this message. Drop your questions below, especially if you've got labs you're worried about. Around here, we don't cancel traditions. We clarify them. And we always, always bring receipts.